All right, this topic is a bit different, but I saw a bunch of anime characters and the title's called The Gen Z Dating Experience. How's it going over there for you guys? You still swiping on Tinder? Constantly getting matched with bots that's trying to get your credit card information? Life is like a race, except you're the only one running it. But at the same time, you yeah. can see everyone else running theirs. Yeah. I'm in my 20s now, and I think it's probably the most awkward time in anyone's life. Oh. <laughs> 20 years old? Unk? Unk? Bro's pushing 20? I wonder how many kids are going to be saying that when they're like 18, like 17 years old, right? Because like a bunch of dudes, like one of the funniest things is like pretty much people in the same generation calling each other unk when you're like literally like three years apart. You're literally in the same generation and you think that someone that just hit their 20s or their 30s is like suddenly they're going to die. Yep, that's the end of their life. On one hand, there's people around my age who were steadily working their careers, mm. climbing the corporate ladder, mm. going out on the weekends, nice. and living the typical adult life. Isn't that nice, guys? You go on social media, you see all the people that you graduated from high school with. Some people are absolute fucking losers doing nothing with their life, so they probably don't post anything. But the other people, they seemingly live the dream. They got, the, they got their dream jobs. They're always flexing their vacation, new assets, cars, houses, you know, new girlfriend relationships, vacations. At the end of the day, I think everyone is suffering inside. Even if you see just the best sides of people on Instagram or Twitter or whatever social media you see, everyone is not content, myself included. No one can be completely content. It's a cycle. Life is just a cycle of suffering and getting back and suffering and getting back. And it's just a combination of a lot of L's, but some dubs. But sometimes people only see the dubs, you know, listed on social media. Then you compare yourself with that idealistic viewpoint that some people are only showing through this frame of reference, right? And you think that that's all their life. And then you compare yourself, them success versus yours. Then you feel very depressed. And on the other, there's still a lot of us trying to figure it out. But everyone is trying to figure it out. I think one of the most humbling moments in life is when you realize that your parents are just trying to figure it out. When your parents are supposed to be these like absolute gods that authority cannot be questioned, at least for myself growing up. And at a certain age, right, you start to realize that they also have no clue what they're doing. And it's a very humbling experience because you realize everyone's just trying to do their best. But I think out of all the good things you can have in life, the one thing most of us want more than anything is someone to do it Money. with. When I look around, I see money. a lot of my friends in long-term relationships, and some of them have even gotten married. But I also have a lot of friends who are my age. I fucking hate. Like, I grew up in a pretty much like a redneck town, growing up in like Vancouver Island. Bro, like, child pregnancy by prom was a common thing for some schools. Literally, there was like a tradition of baby mamas and their kids fucking posing in prom dresses when they're barely 17 or 18, and it's just like the culture there. Bro, kids... <laughs> Dude, <laughs> girls getting knocked up like it's basically super low education without any understanding of like proper responsibility of like sex ed and then you grow up and you go into college and then everyone else is suddenly you scroll through facebook holy shit and like an another kid's popped out it's like what are you guys fucking doing and have never even been in a relationship dating as a gen z adult is an interesting experience because dating comes with a lot of mm. expectations what do guys expect out of girls what do guys expect out of girls? A fucking heartbeat. Truly, the sides, the scales are so twisted for dating for young men and women, right? Women, I, I use this example a lot and I'm not trying to be misogynistic, but I think girls have it very easy compared to guys of the same age bracket when seeking out opportunities for other partners. How many times were you in high school or college and you're going out for a girl that's the same age as you, but they're not going to see you as an equal because they are being pursued by dudes that's like four, five, eight years older who got a stable job, who got their shit sorted out while you fucking still live with your parents. You got fucking nothing. You're broke ass. You got student loans. You have nothing to show for. How do you compete with other dudes that's pretty much like well off, self-sustaining and the girls have so much more options than you? Girls excel at the early game. But here's the really fucked up thing. As you age out, once you start hitting the 30s, a bunch of weird dudes often would take this talking point of like, oh, your eggs are going to dry up. Oh, you better get married soon and have children. Oh my God, you're still single at 30. You ever see those comments? 
bunch of bitter fucking incels that never got the girl they wanted young and then they go after girls that is quote unquote expiring whatever the fuck that means but at that point girls suddenly have less options than guys and guys can now at that age bracket you know compete with us with fucking younger dudes for that younger woman you know so guys are like late scale hyper carry they they definitely scale into the game better the early game sucks for them but for girls the early game they definitely dominate girls what do girls expect from a guy what does one partner expect from the other there's this constant push and pull between what people want from each other romantically, and social media is only making it worse. Mm -hmm. It's why I think a lot of younger people think their romance is dead. Because yeah, because like, not it feels like romance is dead because, well, there's a lot of issues. I think one of the biggest issues is that shit's just too fucking expensive to live, right? Just going on dates. You don't have to, money shouldn't be the prime factor of seeking a partner, right? Love is something that is indescribable and you're going to love someone despite their, you know, financial status. You don't want to fucking marry someone that has no job prospects and no career prospect and that does nothing with their lives. But sometimes you don't understand that they have dreams and ambitions and things are not working out, but they have the right interest and you match with them person like per personally, then I feel like something could be made there. But I think that, again, it's just seeing from this lens of all these like, super hot models and super rich sugar daddies and you know seeing all these women hot women and hot dudes you know flexing their pictures and look at all their trips and all the fun times they're doing and you look at your average self and you get a very distorted sense of what dating a romance could be because social media is full of unrealistic expectations yes. that i don't think 90 percent of young adults can meet yo bro which i'd say more than 90 percent. i'd say 99 percent. it is an unrealistic standard that nobody can meet because it's an extremely artificial, just basically artificial. It's all just fucking made up. What's your type? Hmm. Well, I like short girls, but I go to the gym, so I also want her to be fit too. Mm. And I kind of like when girls have a bit of an attitude, but mm. I think confidence is hot. So I want her to have a lot. Of he wants a short Sundere girl. A pride as well. Okay, so you said short, fit, has an attitude, and a strong sense of pride. Mm. Yeah. Bro, I don't think you want a girlfriend. I think you want a chihuahua. I think you want Vegeta. <laughs> Short, high pride. Yeah, that is Vegeta. Now, I'm not blaming social media for being the reason people are single, but I think sometimes people forget that social media is just a caricature of reality. And that exactly. This shit is not fucking real. You're seeing a distorted reality that's being sold to you so that they can impression farm and you can live in your delusions. That most things shouldn't be taken so seriously. Every other day on Twitter, I see people getting worked up over hypothetical situations that would never happen in reality, but they build their entire perspective on relationships around it. Babe, would you love me if I was a worm? Worm. What? If I got worm. magically transformed into a worm, but I was still your girlfriend, would you still love me? I mean, sure. how could you be my girlfriend if you were a worm? Your wow. worm friends. Just wow. What kind of question is this? Why would you even be a worm? This is why men deserve less. How am I supposed to date a worm? The truth is that there are a lot of are like when your girlfriend fucking dreams that you're cheating on her and she gets mad at you because you cheated on her in her dreams and you're like, what, what, I, what, I, what am I supposed to do? I, I wasn't in your dream. That is literally on you. You're mad at me? really cool people out there that are looking for someone compatible to spend their time with but a lot of the time we only get to see the negatives and sometimes this causes us to shut ourselves down before we even give someone else the chance to possibly mm. say yes believe it or not i've had girls that were interested in me tell me they were afraid to approach me because they didn't think they were my type but the truth is a little bit of a humble humble flex i don't think i'm the best looking dude i think i'm pretty all right slightly above average 6.9 out of 10 on a good day there was this girl that i liked back in college and she and i would get along really well but she would literally tell me that she is too scared to date me because she thinks that i would cheat on her because i look like a playboy to her and i'm like what the fuck <laughs> i've shown you nothing but just me i haven't shown you any signals that i'm a fucking hoe and you have made up your delusion in your mind that i'm gonna cheat on you because you think that i'm better looking and here's another interesting psychology 
This is really interesting. Girls don't want to necessarily date hot guys. When you see the super rich models and blah, 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 getting super sugar daddies, most of the time, their sugar daddies are super ugly too. But what I've noticed a lot is how many times have you been in public and you've seen ugly motherfuckers, confident though, have a girlfriend. I think a lot of guys think that you need to be like the perfect fucking handsome Ikemen that you see in anime, you know? Webtoon fucking Sung Jin Woo looking ass, you know? Just like the most giga chat, just handsome dude. No. Girls just want a dude that's like confident and charismatic and feels like they could like believe or like depend on them, you know, to be able to like deliver and you have that confidence and charisma. You don't need to be super jacked fitness model. You can literally be a fat, ugly bastard, albeit I bet it'll be harder, but I've seen a lot of dudes immediately filter themselves out without even thinking that they could do it because they have this twisted impression that girls will only go for hot guys. But most women, most just average women, they don't want to date a dude that looks better than them. And you're going to call me crazy. You're going to call me schizo. This is personal experience along with other shit of same similar experiences I read online. And I'm like, huh, this is interesting. They're afraid to approach me because they didn't think they were my type. But the truth is, I don't have a type. Superficial things like someone's height, weight, income, or other things are temporary. And if True. you base your relationship with someone on those True. things, then the relationship will also be temporary. Exactly, right? One of the worst things is the first date, here's the issue. If the first date is bar is way too high and you take them to a fancy ass fucking restaurant, you take them to a nice ass dinner, you spend a lot of money and gifts on them, they see you for the money. Now, I would hope that they're a really good person. And even if you treated them well like that, you know, they would see you for someone beyond the fucking credit card. But a lot of people are shitty and they base a relationship based on superficial facts like this. And for sure, money is important. For sure, some semblance of financial stability and a person that seems to know what they're doing in life is more attractive than a bum that may be the nicest dude ever, but it's straight up a bum, right? I'm not saying you should treat relationships like the stock market and invest in someone you don't find attractive, hoping they glow up into a supermodel. I just think that a lot of times when you talk to people, most of them don't care that much about looks. Sure, there are- Straight up, right? All you see is these, just the extreme polarizing ends where it's all about the hottest looks and the hottest body and a lot of money and status prestige. How many times? Like, and this is the really sick part, right? All these twisted young men that grow up lonely and isolated, seeing this facade of social media and other people, you know, explain to them what love is. They get so distorted. They think that they're like a low value human. In comes Andrew Tate. In comes other fucking guru gurus, bro. Male dating advice gurus. How to be an alpha male. Hey, so now you have a bunch of fucking losers who are down on their luck because they've been sold a distorted reality. They latch onto other fucking con artists that tells them this is how you're going to get the bitches, bro. You need to lock in. You need to treat women like trash. You need to go to the fucking gym. You need to be a G. And most importantly, you need to buy my course on how to be a fucking man. That is the funniest and the saddest thing. There are shallow people out there, but not everybody is going to like you. And it's not always about your looks. It's like your boy coming to you like, it's no use trying to date, bro. Girls don't like me because I'm not six feet. No, bro, don't. There are some truths to that. Some girls definitely will just straight up think that you're not six feet. I'm not going to date you. And here's the fucked up part. Here's the funniest part of it all. This, this is the thing that I get mad at the most. And you should use this talking point to the next girl that rejects you because you're not six foot. Because those girls are fucking midgets themselves. They're like five foot nothing little gremlins, bro. And then they want to seek out taller partners. Okay, you know what's gonna happen? Your child is gonna be a five foot two midget. And he's gonna come home crying because he got heartbroken from another girl that wanted a six foot dude. And in the future, you're gonna be the mom of that child that's crying because you yourself are the part of the fucking problem. Mm-hmm. Yup. You mother, you dumb little bitch. I don't want to date dudes that are six foot four, but you're five foot two. You're going to literally make a child that's shorter. Wait, you're feeding into the system. Say that. It's not because you're not six feet. It's because you have no swag. Dating. That's kind of true too, right? Swag. What is swag? It's a fucking abstract term, but you could consider it aura. <laughs> Riz. 
It's basically confidence, charisma. How do you portray yourself? Do you believe in yourself? Do you Are you an interesting person that is someone that can compel someone else based on the hobbies or the interests you have, right? That's basically, quote unquote, swag. You're talking communication, body language, how you look, how you present yourself. I think it's about finding someone who aligns with your values, priorities, and lifestyle. It won't always be a perfect fit, but you shouldn't have to put yourself in an uncomfortable position to meet someone else's expectations. A big fear when it comes to dating is the- And here's the thing. You shouldn't put yourself in a place that can't build other people's expectations is so important because the moment that the relationship starts with a lie, the moment that you try to portray yourself as someone you're not, like someone that's a lot of, has a lot of money or, you know, blah, 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 that mask falls off real quick. The basis, the foundation of a relationship depends on how well you get along with another person based on how comfortable you're around them, how, how well you can like, you know, hang around, spend time, you know, do things together, team bonding exercises, right? Like these things are so much more important to have a long lasting relationship than someone specifically looking for superficial points. Because the moment, again, you, you settle with the girl just because she's super hot, but this is the found the foundation. Guess what, baby? <laughs> you, <laughs> you're getting a fucking divorce. That girl is going to take everything you have and more. In an uncomfortable position to meet someone else's expectations. A big fear when it comes to dating is the idea of being chosen versus being an option. When you're oh. searching for someone to love, you want them to love you back equally. Yeah. No one likes to think that their partner settled for them. You and here's the thing, right? Love is war. <laughs> some, some, the girl that you're texting might have seven other dudes in the queue ready, waiting for the moment. And all those dudes are just waiting for the moment that you slip up as a number one fuckboy in her list. And here's the problem. Right? That is the definition of chosen like versus an option, right? And if someone is treating you as an option, you should walk away. Have some fucking self-respect, some self-dignity, and walk away from a person that, that treats you as a fucking priority list queue. But a lot of people can't do that because they think that they're lucky that the girl is even giving them a chance. These are the simps, man. They have such a weak mentality. They have no fucking self-love or dignity. They think that they're even lucky to be in that queue and they're going to continue to suffer. You want to feel like you were their first option, not the backup plan. And this doesn't mean that you should only be looking for people who've never been in a relationship. That's unrealistic. It means that everyone deserves to feel like their partner chose them, mm -hmm. that they're with you because they want to be, yeah. not because things didn't work out with the people they wanted more, or that they're only with Yo, nobody is getting shit on so fucking hard in this video. And more. Or that they're only with you because they couldn't get anybody else. I think in an era of social media, it's easy to compare yourself against other people. Especially when you're aware that your partner was with people before you. Like if mm. the girl you like says she likes tall. Like she got passed around or something. Oh guys, but you're 5'7". Or are your boyfriend's exes are blonde and you have dark hair? These things can make you feel insecure and that your partner settled for, for sure. you because you aren't their type. So when it comes to dating, it's really important that your partner knows that you chose them and not that they just happened to be your best option at the time. I think for a lot of young people, the scariest part of dating is dealing with commitment. A lot of people have different ways they become attached to others. Commitment seems scary, right? A lot of people can't commit to long-term relationships because they're scared that like, what if I settled? What if there's something better for me out there? And this is definitely a case-by-case -case scenario where some people do settle too easy because they always need to have a girl or a guy around them. Like I've, I remember just like in high school, there is some people that always needs to be in a relationship. Like starting from grade eight to fucking 12, senior year for five years, there are some people that just cannot be without a, a, a partner. And I've noticed that those same people are always abused because those people are usually really weak-willed and they have such a low self-evaluation of themselves and they depend on someone else. They need to rely on someone else for them to have a full, like a meaning to live. And in those scenarios, a lot of other potential partners sees that. They see how they can emotionally abuse and manipulate them. And quite often, they get cheated on. Like, I've seen this happen so many times, and it's just sad because at the end of the day, you're just getting made use of because you don't value yourself. There's no self-respect. Some people are more readily able to commit to someone, and others are a bit more avoidant. Me, Damn, personally, you know. I'm very quick to accept people into my life, and there are a lot of people I consider my friends. Pretty much, if you've ever just listened to me talk for more than 20 minutes, then I'll probably think of you as a friend. 
And this translates to my relationships because every time I meet a girl who's like, hey, you're kind of cute, Mirko. you should hang out more. And I'm like, oh, bet, here's my number. But in my head, I'm already thinking about what we're going to name our kids. <laughs> my friends say I get attached too quickly, and they're honestly probably... The snafu, I hate nice girls monologue. A girl texts you, and throughout the entire day, you're going to be just looking at your phone and reading the message to delude yourself into thinking that she, like, you might have a chance with her. Probably right. I've dealt with girls who are more avoidant in the past, and uh, it's not for the weak. But sometimes people have a fear of commitment for different reasons, and that can make dating hard. And depending on what it is, Ooh, sometimes you have to let that stuff go. Everyone has that one friend that's still holding on to baggage from a long time ago. Yo, bro, I met this girl today, and I think she'd be perfect for you. Nah, bro, I'm never dating again. Yeah. How many times does a guy or a girl, right, have one bad experience with the opposite sex, then immediately they're like, yup, women or men, they should never be even allowed to live. They just jump on the most extreme opinion because they got betrayed they got cheated on they were treated horribly now because they don't want to get hurt anymore they hide in their shell and make excuses on why they're hiding in the shell by covering an entire gender of people saying they're trash all girls are the same bro are you good what's wrong yeah bro it's just i still have some trauma i'm dealing with from my last relationship yeah. oh i'm sorry to hear that pussy i'm sorry to hear that fuck you Get over it, pussy. You're gonna cry and waste your best lives? You're gonna, you're gonna waste your best years of your lives right now crying because one fucking thought betrayed you? Move on, pussy. You're literally wasting the prime of your youth right now because you're depressed that another girl got the better of you. Why don't you fucking prove to her that you're better than her? Why don't you fucking believe in yourself? Now, not everybody is as black pilled as me and can take this kind of criticism, right? No one wants to hear this shit. That's why they want to be coddled and they want to be like, oh, it's going to be okay, pat on the back, sure. This motherfucker going to spend the next fucking 10 years in the same fucking depression cycle until he gets a slap with reality. And I can give you right now, or you can just cry about it how I'm mean. You know I'm right. Know. What happened? I got cheated on. Oh, that's tough, bro. How'd you find out? I went to lunch early that day and I caught her in the act. No mm. way. Yeah. In the act. She shared her chocolate milk with another guy at the lunch table. Oh! Grade 5 memories! <laughs> Elementary school cafeteria! I can't believe Emma Henderson is drinking a chalky milk with Tyler! I thought I was special to you! Wait, what? She told me I was the only guy she would share her true mood with. Damn. I couldn't believe it. Wait, I can't bro, believe how this long either. ago was this? Uh, it's last week you remember Shanice bro from seventh grade yes bro we were gonna spend the rest of our lives together <laughs> bro that was middle school you gotta let that go but I remember it like it was yesterday bro we were 12. <laughs> I can understand not wanting to rush into a committed relationship with someone and wanting to take things slow however one thing that's super common with Gen Z is being caught in a situationship ah situationship what are we we do everything like a couple might do, but what's our label? Do we just, is this just codependency? Are we just using each other because it's convenient to do so? A situationship is basically when you're doing all the things that people in a relationship yeah. would do. Basically, you're a couple, but you're not a couple because it's easier to do these things without putting a label on it to alleviate the pressure, the expectations that comes with being a couple. Do without being in a relationship. Sometimes people aren't on the same page when it comes to commitment and that's fine. One yeah. person may wanna take the relationship to the next level while the other person needs some time to know if they're ready. However- Wait, 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 what, what did Tanjiro say there? Wait, let me love you. Relationship to the next level while the other person- Run, Kobeni! Needs some time to know if, no. if they're ready. Sorry, that's Zenitsu. However, you shouldn't still be acting like you're in a relationship when you're not. Because that's when things get confusing. Yeah, Yo, it's messy. So how's things going with you and that one girl? Ah, oh, man, they're great. We talk every day. We hang out all the time. I yeah. met her mom. She's wow. been staying over. We're yeah. even sleeping in the same bed. Oh, so like, You're is dating. she your girlfriend now? No. Whoa, whoa. Just because I met her mom and cooked alongside with her for Thanksgiving dinner with their entire extended family, doesn't mean I'm her girlfriend, man. Why are you throwing that G word out, man? We're just friends. The G well, word. It's a we've slur. We've been friends for years, and we never sleep in the same bed. 
<laughs> except that one time. Well, I huh? mean, huh? it's different because she's a girl, you know, but we're just chilling. Okay. okay. So if you're just friends, then you wouldn't be mad if I tried to ask her out. I will Ooh. choke slam you through the floor, bro. Exactly, bro. You clearly like her. So just wife her up. Is he talking about that one girl he's been kicking it with, but he's too scared to put a label on it? Yes, yep. bro. Bro, if you don't man up and tell that girl you need her same day delivery like Amazon Prime. All right, bro, chill. I get not wanting to put a label on things, but what's important is that you're both on the same page. One time, I went to get lunch with a female friend of mine, and everything was going great. Until mm. the waitress brought the check. Apparently, since she... That bitch gonna pay for herself. She saw a guy and a girl getting food together. She immediately assumed that we were on a date. And since it's a date, I'm supposed to pay for both of our meals. What? Why should the man have to pay? It should be 50-50. No, she should pay for me. I want to be treated as a man. And that was crazy. Because before bringing the check, waiters usually ask if your meals are separate. Mm. But no. She was just like, this is a date. You're a man. So Conspiracy theory. The girl... Talk to the server. They talked it out. They created a scenario where the bill was for one person. Yep, this is all set up. Kobeni fucking set him up. Date, you're a man, so you pay. My friend offered to cover her half, but at that point, I had already accepted my fate. So yeah, make sure it's clear where you stand with someone before you end up spending $53 on a- Yeah, and it's kind of awkward, right? Cause it's like shit. Now it's like, oh, is, is there a problem? What, you can't fucking pay for this meal but shared between you two? And then the girl has to say, I, I can pay? And now you're like, oh, if I accept the help, I look less of a man because this is the fucking culture that we live in where the man provides. Well, fuck me. I guess I gotta pay the entire thing and say it's okay when Kobeni full on knows that she set this scenario up. A burger and fries. One unique thing about dating for Gen Z, though, is that we have a lot of options when it comes to looking for love. Obviously, mm. there's online apps, man. The advent of online dating apps, which has made, I think, dating fucking worse and more shallow and just have created this such a negative, toxic culture and like understanding of what romance should be for young people. It also helps a lot of people connect to on top of that traditional dating where you meet someone either on your own or through your friends well, like there is if you're not going to school if you're not going to some sort of club or some sort like and, and i mean like some sort of event right you don't just approach girls in fucking public at the grocery store or at the gym they want to be fucking left alone the only time for me when i've actually had a reason to like when, when when there's an excuse to show up every day in the same high school college different clubs right activities intramural sports shit like that that's kind of or volunteering or different events that's kind of when you have an opportunity to meet someone else where it's kind of like appropriate for you to engage but in just straight up public it's kind of weird you know and a lot of people as soon as they graduate and they enter the workforce there's really limited options in meeting that person if you haven't already gotten a relation prior. And you start talking and then eventually start dating. But there's also online dating where you create your profile, get a match, mm. and hope that the stranger you meet is normal enough to not make you normal enough? Hope that the stranger you meet is not a fucking bot. How many times you fucking swiping on Tinder and you match with this really hot girl and you're like, oh my God, oh my God. I've been swiping for the last two weeks and nothing has been matched, but I finally got a match and it's the hottest girl ever. Wait a minute. Why is she asking me for my credit card information? You want to block them on everything the second the date is over. And there's also e-dating, which is cringe. Yeah, that was a concept that I learned. I still don't fully comprehend how people treat this shit like real dating. Like, you know what e-sex is? Like, this blew my mind. Like, I was in, like, a group chat for some sort of mobile game, and there was, for some reason, there's always this couple that's always, like, flirting in the group chat. It's fucking weird. And a bunch of other dudes are, like, simping for it, too. It's kind of really weird. But, like, they would always say, oh, yeah, we had e-sex. I'm like, what? What do you mean? <laughs> it's like role play. You get on the call. <laughs> and, it's, you, you, and you're talking it out. You're narrating <laughs> You know, you hop on with your Discord kitten. And, oh, it's just weird. I'm like, 
What the fuck? Y'all do this shit? They do. It, it exists, bro. There's a lot of desperate, lonely people. I'm not saying like, I don't know. It's like e dating. He didn't get so weak because like you met them in a like game or online and you just talked them through Discord or different fucking talk. I mean, basically, it's not so different from matching with somebody on an online app. It's just that you don't really meet them in person. So everything is anonymous and behind technology, which is kind of sus. The date is over. And there's also e-dating. Kind of like Kirito and Asuna. Yes, but they met later on, you know. They actually met, but if you consider everything without me, well, I'd say the full dive technology made that whole e-dating experience so much more engaging to the point where it might as well be the fucking real thing. Currently, with our technological limitations, it's just you on a fucking phone. You, you on a call, and just, you just, you're just cranking it while you're on a call with another Discord girl. It's, it's weird. Which is cringe. Traditional dating may seem less common among Gen Z with how prevalent dating apps are, but a lot of relationships still start this way. Especially if you're still in school where you're regularly yep. surrounded by people around your age. Exactly, when you have a reason to be in an environment to engage like that, right? Not just in a random stranger that you meet, you know, at a fucking, like a cashier you're trying to hit up, don't do that! Or someone, a girl at the gym, don't do that! Leave them alone unless they're really making signals to you! There are a lot of obstacles that get in the way of traditional dating though. Like having enough free time to go out and meet people, mm -hmm. or having enough personal connections to find an available partner, or even just having enough money to keep going on dates. Exactly, man. I think that the first date should never be expensive. I think that if 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 a girl demands a first date to be at a for to be really expensive, you already know that this is not the one for you. It's only gonna get worse. At the end of the day. It should be about spending time with someone that you like and what you're doing. It doesn't matter because it's who you're doing it with, you know, on dates. But the biggest hurdle by far is dealing with rejection. Ooh. No is one of the hardest words to hear. Building <laughs> the worst thing she can say is no. How many times have you heard that? Think up the courage to approach someone is hard enough as it is. Yeah. And for it to not go your way really stinks. People walk around every day with countless insecurities living in the back of their head. Mm -hmm. So no matter who you are, being rejected can make you feel like you're just not good enough. Here's a life hack. Here's a life hack for those people that's in public, that is very introverted, that feels like everyone is looking at them and constantly judging them. Guess what? That is such an arrogant and such a prideful, selfish opinion of yourself. No one gives a fuck what you look like, bro, in public. Everyone is consumed with their own look and appearance outwards no one is caring about how you look what your problems are everyone is obsessed with themselves in the moment that you understand this the moment that you realize then you can basically just be yourself you're too busy worrying about how you're perceived that you can't even fucking live your life he's living in the back of their head so no matter who you are being rejected can make you feel like you're just not good enough and that's fair You've probably heard it before. The worst she can say is no. And no, it's not the worst she thing can say she worse. can say. You could walk up to a girl and ask her out and she could look at you and say, Ew. Ew. Bald. What the fuck is that hairline? Gross. They look at you and say, Ew. I would never go out with an ugly, stinky, bald-headed, swagless nerd. Uh, I mean, he's literally bald here. Or like you, my standards aren't that low. And honestly, Sheesh. at that point, you're cooked. But that's only the worst case scenario. Well, you got cooked, but this person's also trash. And trash, per trash people are going to be trash. And this shouldn't make you give up hope on finding love. But here's the thing. A lot of people take that first negative interaction and suddenly they rationalize that everyone is going to be like that to protect yourself from experiencing further failures. Everyone wants to cower in their shell. Everyone wants to hole up in order to not feel bad again, which makes a lot of sense. But again, you're just wasting the limited time you have on this earth to experience all these different things, but you choose to hide. That is such a waste of life. Most of the time, rejection usually goes like this. Hey, uh, I saw you across the way there and I thought you were really pretty. I was wondering if you'd like to go out sometime. Oh. Pretty. I was wondering if you'd like to go out sometime. Oh, that's really sweet. Thank you. But I'm not really looking for anything at the moment. Ooh. Sorry. 
Oh, okay, yeah, no worries. Have a nice day. No matter how nice it is, rejection always hurts. Yeah. And for most guys at least, I don't even think it's a fear of rejection, but rather a fear of being seen as a creep. And I completely understand. The thought of making a woman uncomfortable is almost unbearable. But you can't let your fear of rejection turn into a fear of approaching people in general. That, All right. th and this, this doesn't mean keep chasing after that same girl. Do not do that. If she's rejected you, understand your place and remove yourself from the situation. Do not, do not pursue, okay? Don't pursue. This is basically saying take the L, grieve over it, make sure you're good, get back in the game. Get back up. Hey, right, bro, I'm finally going to do it. Today, I'm going to tell that girl how I really feel. Bet, bro, you're in there. I'm telling you, just play it cool. You're right, bro. I just got to stay confident. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what time the library closes? I need <laughs> the, 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 the library. Don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. To return this book, but I'm trying to figure out if I should do it before or after my next class. Could you help me out here? <laughs> um, he, uh. Well, he fumbled that. He didn't even fucking say anything. I thought he'd start spurging out. Bro just fucking ghosted. I had to go to the bathroom. Despite the challenges, I still think dating traditionally is one of the best ways to meet someone. Your friends can help put you on with people yeah. they think will match your person. Yeah, I think so too. I think that online dating, there's a lot of people with such a high standard that's been distorted from this fake reality they've been sold through social media. And they're going to be way more superficial and way more just callous about everything in a traditional setting people are genuinely less mentally ill <laughs> you know it's it's generally less terminally online they're reasonable people that's looking for a genuine you know uh connection but that's also hard to do right to because again once you get out of that setting be beyond like school college right all you really have is work and you should not be trying to date someone at work that's gonna get you sent by you're gonna get a fucking email from hr and clubs right nightclubs bars Usually that, that kind of place, is, is that really where you think that you're going to meet, like, the one? Most people are there just for a cheap hookup or some sort of different reason, but it's definitely hard to find, you know, this traditional setting. It, it's a, it's a time-limited window that you have, and beyond that, you're kind of left with online dating, unless you want to figure out different community events and volunteering and different things right an excuse where people gather and to interact maybe you could seek someone out there personality and it gives you a more organic connection with someone that can grow over time online dating isn't really a new thing anymore and honestly it isn't as bad as it you don't eat the meat where you earn their bread yes and the other line of that which is more crude that i like is don't shit where you eat right there's a place and time for everything don't get it mixed up used to be I have a few friends who met their partners on dating apps and they're honestly in very happy, healthy relationships with. Yeah, they can definitely this. This can happen just because you found a partner through an online dating app doesn't mean that it's going to be a failure. Good things can happen. It's just again, there's a lot of fucked up mental illnesses going on through online dating apps. People they met online. I think the biggest issue with online dating, though, is that since you're dealing with strangers, it can be very superficial. The only mm -hmm. thing they really have to go off of initially is your appearance and whatever you put on your profile. Exactly. So sometimes it's hard to really find someone who's a good Do you match like for dogs? You. It Machima? also goes against the number one rule of the internet, which is to never link up with random people you met online. But it does lead to one of my favorite games, hmm. which is figuring out how long it takes for your date to finally reveal themselves as a weirdo. Wow, this was such a nice date. I really enjoyed talking to you. Of okay. course, you're such an interesting person. Can I ask you something before we leave? Sure. Uh-oh, here comes the freaky side. Here, what's up? Can I take a picture of your feet? Your toes look very nice, and I would love to set them as the wallpaper on my phone. What Maybe you could ask this three months into the relationship, you know? Maybe, just maybe, she would match her freak if she was comfortable around after understanding who you are. Right? And she could play around and, and maybe three months in, she'd be like, all right, you can take a picture of my toes. But on the first date, on, on the first date, oh, there's a time and place for everything. And, and you're basically going on a, you, you, this is a 13 out of 10 on a scale of fucked up questions you can ask on the first date. Probably not a good idea, but some people, right? And this is, a, a, what I'm about to say, um, is the core reason why a lot of guys also just immediately send dick pics to girls. It's because these dudes aren't 
Like they, they, they're aware what they're doing is weird, but they're trying to also find someone else that's going to match their freak. And those girls do exist. It's just very rare. It's a shotgun approach. Not wasting time immediately saying or sending something that shows your intentions of being a freak. And the other side, they'll immediately reject usually, which is all part of the plan. It's just like, you're not the one. That's fine. You don't, you don't have to be the one. But they could find the, you know, the exception that matches their freak. And that's what they're looking for. Right now with the toe pictures, maybe Mirko over here <laughs> is going to agree. Who knows? What? I, I thought you said you like girls with a good soul. No, no, no. I said Toes. I like girls with good souls. Soul. <laughs> here, just hold still. Get it? Soul of the foot. Here, just hold still for a second. All right. Um, I think my Uber's here. And then there's e-dating. Oh, boy. The digital age. Oh, this is the thing, bro. Remember the um, Twitter account that was doxing Chibi? Remember their profile, the bio? E-dating services? There's paid e-dating service. So, I, so, again, I have already given you my example from my past experiences of how I know e-dating between like two couples that was in a group chat that would overshare information. But there's also dudes, and like there's these dudes that can't even e-date, right? There's these dudes that cannot even pick up a Discord kitten to go on a call with. So there's these paid services. You are paying for online companionship. Isn't that crazy? It's changed the way we do a lot of things, including dating. And e-dating is something that's really common among people who don't go outside a lot. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, I've been playing video games since I was four. And over the years, I've met a lot of really cool people online and would even consider them good friends. Yeah, I mean, the extent of my experiences with people online, you know, playing Modern Warfare 2 on Xbox 360 Live, is a bunch of dudes just saying they fucked my mom and calling me a bunch of slurs, right? That's fine. But like, when did people start to like, e-date and have e-sex? Like, are they doing this in COD lobbies? No, there's not a lot of girls playing COD, but I bet in Valorant maybe. I don't know. This is weird, man. I think just about everyone in Gen Z has at least one friend that they've never actually met in person. E I know a guy who started a Riz business and is actually getting clients. And here's the thing. He's smart. He's smart. Because the, here's the easiest way to make money online, guys. Here is the easiest way to make money online. And to an extent, my entire content is basically that. Pretty much every content is kind of that. You make, you make the most money online by taking advantage and giving hope to lonely, depressed men. Right? You give them hope. You prey upon their desperation. There's a bunch of dudes that are so desperate to be a high-value alpha man. But they're a bunch of fucking beta cucks. They have no confidence. They have nothing going on for them. They have such a negative outlook on life. But you see a charismatic person talking online about, do you want to be surrounded by bitches? Look at the sports cars I have. Why are you not a millionaire yet at the age of 15? Where's your Bugatti? Buy my course. And I will teach you how you can be a high value alpha male like myself. That's what you do. And if you're somewhat good enough and you're somewhat smooth enough to kind of convince them, you can prey on the loneliness and the desperation of people online. And for me, it's the same thing. A lot of you guys feel like this is a nice community where you can hang out and watch anime together with someone else that can break it down for you. For sure, reaction content, the core of it is the relatability with the person watching and giving you a breakdown of what you personally enjoyed. And then you feel this strong parasocial bond that you feel like you belong to somewhere that every day that you can hang out and watch something and have fun and forget about the troubles in your life. Absolutely. I constantly mention this. I never like tell you guys that I'm like, I never want to sell you a delusion without you being aware of it. Right. It's a two way fucking street. And that's why I will always like not pander or cater towards a super whale that's spending a lot of money on me because I know that can only be toxic and unhealthy. A lot of people think that like courtship, here's another thing. You'll notice that a lot of like female content creators, their quote unquote community, one of their biggest like community members is usually the biggest whale. They act like a fucking white knight. They spend the most on their, you know, content. And they do this because they feel like if they keep doing this, maybe they too can, you know, uh, get with the fucking creator. That, that's it, right? This whole, uh, that's why it's, it's weird when people donate such a large amount of money or gift a lot of subs because behind it, 
at the end of the day, maybe you do have disposable income and you want to, you know, spend it on someone that you want to support. And that's very nice. That's very kind of you. That's very genuine, right? I appreciate that. But most people are just very fucked up in the head and they're so lonely and depressed and isolated that they think that the only way that they can like feel good is by spending money in content creators. And then if that content creator then kind of receives that donation or money and sells them the delusion, that's a wrap. I could make so much fucking more money if I constantly told you guys about how you guys are my family. I love you so much. I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm living my dream life all thanks to you. Oh, thank you, thank you. I leave that shit out. None of that shit fucking matters. Focus on the content, deliver the content, and entertain. That's it. Dating isn't too different from your typical long distance relationship, but it's definitely a relatively new experience. One day, you and your homie are queuing swift plays and an e-girl with a soft voice gets on your team. Now you see him duo queuing on his alt and silver at 4 a.m. <laughs> E-days. Why is it always Valorant? Something about Valorant is just the perfect game where a lot of girls also play and it's just, you know, this e-dating shit. It, it, what is it, bro? I know I make fun of e-dating a lot, but genuinely, if you're happy with someone you met in a Discord server, then that's great. But I've also seen a lot of e-relationships in badly with leaked DMs. Oh yeah, there's so much fucking drama that happens with e dating and shit that goes crazy on Twitter. I forget. I I don't remember the names. I was it. I, there was some like Valorant couple, and there was some. I don't know. They were like always. Their entire content was being like a Discord kitten and like a and, and like being a girlfriend to another dude, and it's like a Valorant power couple. And eventually, I don't know. Did they do a face reveal or some shit? I'm not sure. And then it turns out, and, and you get a tweet longer the next fucking week about my trauma with this person. It's full of messages I wish I never saw. So if you're gonna e date, what the fuck? Are you a good boy for mommy at 5:50 a.m.? Yes, I'm mommy's little puppy slave, colon three. Mommy wants to try using the mayonnaise again tonight. Okay, mommy, I'll get a big jar. <laughs> Never saw. So if you're gonna e-date, make sure she's only for you and not for the hashtag general. No oh, is she getting passed around in gen chat? <laughs> she's getting passed around! Gen chat, how can you live with yourself, bro? The love of your life is already... Dude, the love of your life is on a Discord call with you while you're cranking it, but she is DMing five other dudes at the same time. No matter what kind of situation you find yourself in, it's important that you always remember to be yourself. You don't need to be someone else to attract a certain type of person. Exactly. Never be someone who you're not. Now, this doesn't mean that you shouldn't improve yourself. Some people use these, you know, platitudes as absolutes. No, have some fucking awareness. If you're a piece of shit, miserable loser, right? Maybe you should take a reflection on yourself and better yourself, right? But what I mean is don't portray yourself to be some rich, successful person, some different personality when you're not. Because once that does work, Maybe you did successfully catfish a girl to thinking that you are this person, but eventually the mask comes off, everything is ruined. Remember, the foundation of the relationship is the most important, the basis, the first fucking level. And that hinges on who you are and how much a girl like, likes you for who you are. It doesn't matter if you think you're cringe. If a girl genuinely likes you or vice versa, they will listen to all your cringe hobbies everything that you think is dorky that other people might make fun of, they don't care. They just like that you're enthusiastic and passionate about a different topic. It doesn't give a fuck, right? Maybe you love My Little Pony, man. Uh, this is a very extreme example, but maybe you're a brony, bro, and, and everyone thinks you're fucking weird saying, why do you fucking, you know, draw all these My Little Pony art? But maybe you can find that person that'll appreciate you for who you are. No matter who you are, they love you because they love you. You know what I'm saying? Don't be someone who you're not. The foundation is the most important. And someone along the way will recognize that genuineness. And then you can start something beautiful like that. And if you feel the need to act like someone you're not to impress someone, then they're probably not worth it. You're there are fucked. people out there who will like you for you. You don't have to pretend. Exactly. So just stick to being yourself. We all know that one guy that starts acting different when girls come around. 
Bro, there's no way he's beating Goku. Nobody can beat Goku. Dude, I'm telling you, with Gear 5, Luffy solos the verse. Yeah. Bro, he's not touching Goku. You're tweaking. Bro, the Toon Force. I'm telling you, the nah, Toon bro, Force. Nah, bro, I'm not bro, trying like, to hear it, You don't bro. know he's about the touching Toon Goku. Force. Hey, guys. Oh, hey, what's up? What you guys doing? Oh, Goku. we were just having an anime debate. Like, this guy thinks Luffy can beat... I mean, that was really more so him. Like... I the perfect way to end this video is if Chisato right now that just showed up as the girl doesn't think that Goku versus Luffy is cringe and actually chooses Yuji here rather than Todo because she is also a dork that loves anime power scaling and him right over here, he's going to feel fucking stupid because he tried to be someone who he's not because he thought that the girl only values these superficial things that in his mind is attractive to women because he's been sold a delusion from social media. So him, like, I'm not really into all that anime stuff for real. It's like kind of immature for me. Are oh, you guys talking about anime? I love anime. Have you guys there seen it is. Hunter x Hunter? Uh, there Hunter it Hunter? is. Yeah, that's my show. Like, Killer Will, like, that's my favorite character. Bro, weren't you the just calling up. it mid, like, the last week? Up. Bro, chill. You always bringing up old stuff. Like, I'm a different man now. All right. right. Um... Anyway, I was coming over to ask if you still needed your shift covered tomorrow. My schedule opened up and I wanted some extra hours. Oh yeah, it's perfect. I really need it to be off tomorrow. So if you can, that'd be great. Yeah, bro. Now you can come to the gym. Like, I be going every day. In Shut fact, the fuck up. Go now, low key. Probably hit the bench. Um, Why are you talking like that? Bench. Three plates. Warm up. Mm-hmm. Hitting everything today. Yep. You like these biceps? Oh, <laughs> just stop it. Stop it. You're not that kind of person. If you are that kind of person, go ahead. But again, do not play a fucking persona thinking that this is going to get you bitches. And even if you do get the bitches, it's going to end so terribly. Yeah. So I'll text you when I pick your shift up. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, you can text me too, though. No. To sum it up. Relationships are complicated, and a lot of times, finding the person who's right for you takes a lot of trial and error. Yeah. Some people get lucky and are able to find the right person for them at a young age. And for others, it takes a while. What matters is that you remember to prioritize yourself just as much as you value the relationship. You shouldn't lose yourself just to be with someone else, so make sure you take time to focus on you as well. Don't become one of those people who spends every second of their life with their significant other and invest in a support system outside of your partner too. When it comes to relationships, it can be easy to turn a good thing into a bad thing. And the key to making sure things don't go south is finding balance. Don't hang on to something bad for too long, but also don't be quick to let a good thing go just because you hit a bump in the road. Well like said. all things, a healthy relationship takes patience, compromise, and maturity. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. There is no reason for this video to be fucking almost an hour long for myself. I can't believe I just recorded almost an hour long fucking video for a 15 minute video talking relationships. But there's a lot of stuff to talk about. And hopefully you guys kind of saw a different type of commentary and like my mindset when it comes to different situations, not just fucking anime. I was just baited by anime profile picture. <laughs> All I saw was anime characters and a topic that was pretty interesting. But this is a really well made video with some well you know, said things. Suburban Will. Here is the link. Please go check out his channel. Like the video and sub to his channel if you haven't. There's a lot more videos that I think exist that may introduce, uh, sorry, that may interest you guys. For example, these are the shorts. I don't know. The new ad of coping with being a Gen Z ad of working in customer service. Oh yeah, I want to watch something like this. Shit like this is actually right up my alley, but that's it from me. I'll see you next time.